Hi guys, I'm Yusuke, a karate coach in Japan, and thank you so much for checking out today's video. Today we have a special guest, John Cannon. Thank you so much for being on this channel today. Thank you. It's a pleasure. It's my be pleasure. Here. I'm sure most of my audiences knows you, but some are from Asia, some are from Europe. So maybe could okay. you just introduce yourself briefly to the audience, please? Sure. Uh, my name is Sean Kanan. Uh, most people know me from playing Mike Barnes, Karate's Bad Boy and Karate Kid 3. Uh, I'm, I'm also uh, a writer and a producer, and I'm currently on a television show called The Bold and the Beautiful which is syndicated in, I think, 40 different countries. So mm -hmm. it may be, uh, may be seen by some of the people watching this. Uh, I don't right. think it's in Japan, though. I see. But you uh, know what's funny? I just, uh, I, somebody just sent me this. I just mm -hmm. got, um, I just got a movie poster for a film oh. that I did with Bruce Willis. Okay. And uh, it's the Japanese poster. So, oh, please. Uh, let me see if I can find this for a second. <laughs> I'd love to see that. See. Yeah, there it is. Let's see. I can... Oh, I see it. Yeah. Survival City. Is that the title? Well, it's called Survive the, the Game. In, oh, but in, uh, in Japan, uh, they yeah. made it <laughs> Survival City. Survival City? Okay, whatever. <laughs> so uh, I guess I guess that's out in Japan right now. So uh, mm -hmm. you, can, you, you can see me in that film. So, um, yeah, I'd like to ask you, you know, some questions from, I would say, four different aspects out today. Okay. Uh, sure. One uh, from a martial art aspect, uh, two, Karate Kid 3, uh, three, Cobra Kai, and last, about your book, The Way of the Cobra. Excellent. So let us start off with your martial art background. Um, before you played Mike Barnes in Karate Kid 3, I believe you trained in various um, styles of martial arts. So could you tell us like how, how you got started and what kind of martial art you did? Yeah, when I was about 15 years old, uh, I set foot in uh, a Shotokan dojo in my Shotokan. hometown of Western Pennsylvania uh, under uh, Sensei William Stoner. And I loved it. I, I really did. I, I, I just, uh, you know, it, it was such, um, it was needed in my life at that time. It gave mm. me uh, a sense of discipline and confidence that I needed. Um, and, uh, you know, martial arts has been something that's been a part of my life on one level or another and in one form or another uh, pretty much most of my life. So I studied uh, Shotokan Karate for uh, several years and then my school uh, went under the umbrella of Shihan Fumio Demura's school, which was uh, Shitoru Itosokai. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we you know, made some of the, uh, the changes from Shotokan to uh, Shitoru. Oh, and, I see. Uh, you know, uh, my relationship with Master Demera has been uh, a very important relationship in my life. I didn't realize it at the time, but mm -hmm. he was Pat Morita's stunt double right, in right. All, the, all the Karate Kid films. And um, he was very instrumental in helping me uh, to get the role of Mike Barnes. Mm -hmm. And so over the years, I've, I've studied different martial arts. I've trained uh, uh, a little bit of uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I've trained uh in some american kickboxing um you know I've, I've done little bits and pieces in different things um uh i have done some training with uh master uh, daryl vidal who played uh yes vidal from locust valley karate he has told me Florida. about it <laughs> daryl's, a, daryl's a fantastic uh, person um he he is also uh, uh taught me uh filipino stick and knife fighting so okay. yeah, yeah, colleague. So um, you know, I I I, I, uh, I don't have a black belt, um, and uh, you know, it was never important to me to go get a black belt. Mm. Although I think at some point I, I would actually like to you know train and work towards getting one. But you know, for me, martial arts is is a lot more than just the physical aspects of it. It's it's a philosophy. It's a it's a mentality. It's a way of life. Um, um, I think that martial arts, in its in its when it's at its very best, personifies the very best qualities of mm. um, who we are as people. You know, right, uh, right. perseverance, discipline, compassion, empathy, mm. uh, courage—all those sort of things. And um, I think for that reason, I've, I've always just—it's had a very special place in my heart. I see. 
did you pick up those lessons through your maybe your sensei or was it through your like your, just your practices and like it just came to you you know i think you pick up lessons from different people but i mm. think the hopefully in life the best lessons that we learn are when you become self-aware and you see yourself change uh. and I saw, i saw myself as a very young undisciplined boy grow into being a confident man and and martial arts had a lot to do with that and mm -hmm. that transformation for me was one of the most amazing lessons amazing experiences that i've had i see i mean you perceived yourself like that when you were 15 years old did you mm. what what made you step i mean step your foot into the dojo i mean it must have been hard well, i guess we must have been I'll hesitant you, at first <laughs> when, when i was when i was much younger i i I experienced a lot of bullying. Mm. And um I remember around 1976 Rocky came out and uh, America was right, right, insane right. for boxing. Mm. And so I started doing some boxing at a gym on the south side of Youngstown, Ohio, which was a very rough area. I and see. my parents realized very quickly and very wisely that the people that were boxing there were doing it as a way of getting out of a very bad socioeconomic situation. Mm -hmm. And so they said, you know, maybe that's not the right place for our son. Um so they said would you consider would you consider going to a karate school? And I I really didn't want to at first. Mm -hmm. Uh but once I started uh you know, I I was bitten by the bug and uh I fell in love with it. <laughs> All right, see, see. You know, I've never done martial arts seriously i would say in the united states but only in japan so i never knew the difference in demographics between mm. different types of martial arts uh that that's very interesting did you what what martial art do you study shotokan oh shotokan okay and in japan um usually people do mainly they have one one style of martial art right. and people rarely explore outside of Other their styles. um area and Until I started this YouTube channel, I was only doing Shotokan. But mm -hmm. after I started this, I started to look into other styles and it's been a very interesting journey for me as well to yeah. learn the similarities and also the differences and why why there is such a difference. So mm. the, I mean the fact you said you did Shotokan and then you moved on to Shotoryu. I mean we're in the within the same family of karate. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you must have seen some similarities and also like differences too. Do you remember some like struggling to move on to Oh my Shitori? god. I, you know, I, I I can vividly remember when I first was learning how to do um uh magiri right? when I was learning how to do a front kick. I mm -hmm. I was convinced I was never going to be able to straighten my leg and you know properly <laughs> throw the kick, you know, but I think that's one of the greatest lessons of uh, you know, martial arts that um you know with with discipline and with time and with practice what initially seems uh like it may be impossible is not impossible mm. and, uh, uh, that's a, that's another uh, you know philosophy of martial arts that i like very much that you know you have all these things that you learn in martial arts which are ostensibly physical mm. but as you get older and as you become more advanced in martial arts you learn that you can apply these lessons to all different aspects of your life and right. for me i think right. that's the essence of martial arts mm. you know i was talking to a friend of mine the other day he he's a third degree black belt in taekwondo but um you know he, he's older and he said look you know um uh, i might not be able to do all of the gymnastic fancy kicks that uh, you know a young guy at 20 can do right. but i can do what i can do what i can do as a uh, would say third don but mm. but what i What I'm getting at is that you know anybody can study martial arts. You may not necessarily be as good as somebody else, but you can embody the spirit of martial arts mm -hmm. and and you know the qualities of what it means to be a martial artist uh at any age. And and whether even if you you know have um you know if you have if you have physical limitations or things like that. Um the physical aspect of martial arts while while very important is not the only aspect of martial arts. Mm -hmm. I agree. Like a lot of the schools I think you start at a very young age, right? Like maybe 10, mm -hmm. maybe even 5. Yeah. Uh, but actually I have a program online like doing Zoom lessons of karate and the interesting thing is the average age is around 35. 
and people、oh. come back to karate. Like,、yeah. let's say they did karate until high school, right? And then they had、mm-hmm. to study and all, like, the school life came in, and then they got married, they had kids, and they got settled now. So they're like, why not restart my karate?、Yeah. <laughs> and it's just so amazing to, to, you know, have them again regain their confidence. I mean, not confidence, but regain their passion yeah. and training、yeah. karate with me. So it is something you can do throughout、uh. all ages. And Like, I remember myself、um, in an aspect, aspect of gaining confidence.、Um, I did soccer before. So, soccer is all, you know, there aren't a lot of discipline, I would say. <laughs> I mean, of course, you are going to, you know, put in the work, but it's not so like organized as karate. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. once I started doing katas,、um, you know, soccer, there's basically 22 players on the field, and the attention is obviously going to get divided by 22. So,、sure. But in kata, when you're doing it, like let's say at a tournament, everybody's、mm-hmm. gonna be staring at you. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, just you being able to do your best, not, not get nervous. Under, un, under, under a form of pressure. Yes, yes, judgment, yes. And judgment. Yes, and yes. That has, judged. right. That has helped me a lot, actually. And maybe when I'm doing a presentation or just me I, I when I'm that, walking around. Know, or, how many times have you seen someone do a kata <laughs> that is. You know, maybe overweight, maybe older, but they have the courage and the bravery、right. to go out there and do it. And I, you know, I think that's wonderful. And it's exactly、mm. what you said. You know, maybe, maybe they're not going to,、um, you know, win in their division for kata. Right, right. But maybe they're going to go and give a presentation at work that they would have otherwise been nervous and ineffective. And now suddenly they're able to do it with.、Uh, A new sense of confidence, and right, right. But that's for them, that's the benefit, that's the lesson、mm-hmm. of doing it, not necessarily、mm-hmm. the physical aspect of it, right? Right. And I read in your interview that when you got the role of Mike Barnes in Karate Kid 3, you had to improvise on the spot. <laughs>、um, was that something maybe that came from your confident martial art background? You would just say that? I don't know.、Uh, I don't know where it came from.、Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, the final tournament scene was almost entirely improvisation on my part. Oh, really? And,、uh, yeah. And,、oh. you, know, when I, you know, tormenting Daniel and saying all of these horrible things <laughs> right, that, right, I, right. That, that are so far removed from who I am as a human being. But unfortunately,、um, you know, I, I, was, I wasn't playing Sean Kane and I was playing <laughs> Mike Barnes. Right, right. Um, but, um, I, you know, I don't know where it came from.、Um, I think probably a lot of it came from the fact that I was bullied a lot as a kid. And,、uh-huh. and I, I, I probably drew on、uh, s- some of the experience that, that, you know, that I encountered.、Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's funny when, when I, I, I meet people,、uh, especially kids, and they say, Oh my God, I'd be so scared of Mike Barnes. I said, I'd be scared of Mike Barnes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> If I met that lunatic when I was, you know, 15, 16 years old, maybe now. <laughs> mm-hmm. you, like you, you, you use that metaphor at your like anti bullying、uh, programs,、mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah. You, like I read in an interview that、um, so you show Mike Barnes at first. Yeah. And then you use that as an example. I、right? say, yeah, I show, I show the scene at the All Valley Tournament. And here's the thing first of all, let me preface it by saying when you're、um, an adult and、mm. you're speaking with kids,、mm. there's the age gap, right? And right. so it's not always easy to make an initial connection with them,、mm-hmm. right?、Mm-hmm. But when I, I put the scene from Karate Kid 3 on and they watch it, you know, and they're, they're、uh, very intrigued by it. It opens a door for me to have just a few moments to connect with them when I have their attention. And, and,、um, and I say, would you, would you believe that that scary guy used to get bullied? And they're like, no way. And then they start to open up. And、uh, it's, it's really、uh, it's amazing. A lot of times I go to schools and facilitate a dialogue up on a stage with, with kids that. Have been bullied, have witnessed bullying, or who have actually been a bully. And you, know, you get these kids talking, and some of the results are really profound. And、um, I, I'm very passionate about it.、Mm, yeah, that, that is amazing. I mean, I wish we had a program like that in Japan too. I mean, usually、mm, you wouldn't get such a deep, I mean, Attention from the teacher, to be honest,、yeah. in, in Japan about bullying. Like,、um, let's say 
people are becoming, I, I guess, over protective they especially the parents so the teachers are pretty scared to step in to, into the relationship do you, of do you think that japanese culture from from what i understand and i hope i'm not wrong and i hope i don't say this in a way that's i i think it puts a lot less emphasis on individuality and puts correct. more emphasis on the idea of the national culture and the group i think also that there's a fact that Japanese people are homogenous in the sense that mm, mm, mm. everyone who lives in Japan, unless you're an American or, or from another, or you're Japanese. Japanese. Yes. You know, you, you look more or less the same. Mm, you mm, speak mm. the same language. You know, and, and so I think when you when you tend to be more like the other person, you don't stand out. And maybe, maybe I would imagine maybe that results in less bullying. I don't know. You know, in America, uh, you've got interesting. everyone's different. And, and, and we find difference is what gives us our strength and it's what's mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. But when you're a kid, nobody wants to be different. You just want to mm -hmm. fit in. Right, right, but right. Different, you, get, you get sometimes singled out and bullied. I, I just wonder I if that's... See. I see. No, that's a very interesting um, question. Um, I would say I can't really compare the numbers. Like I can't say one is more, one is one is less, but you do see bullying in a slightly different way in Japan. Mm. Like since um, we are homogenous kind of, um, people, um, harmony plays a huge part in our culture. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't want to stand out. Um, I would say more than like I remember myself, like not caring too much about standing out or not when I lived in the U.S. Like yeah, uh, I mean I was in the Asian community. Oh, so, so you, you lived in, I was going to say, where did you learn oh, yes. to speak English? Uh, I, lived in, I lived in New Jersey for five, six oh. years. Right, right, right. And, you know, it was a pretty diverse um, town there. Yeah. Asian community, white, you know, a, a lot, it was a very mixed up um, culture. And I came back to Japan. And yeah, I mean, I would say since everybody is Japanese, um, people's, people wouldn't um, kick you out of the group um so easily like it's not direct but it's very indirect the bullying so um they wouldn't say anything direct to you but they'll find a way to let the others know to leave you alone Interesting. so so it's so if you just look at it from the outside like if you start like if you just i don't know maybe day one in your classroom you wouldn't notice it but then as time goes on you notice wait is everybody ignoring me? Like, it's like that. So, Which is a terrible form of bullying. It is, it is. It is very tricky. And the, so that's why the teachers sometimes don't even notice it. And the teachers wouldn't know which 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 side to emphasize with because they will be talking from their side. And yeah, so it is something very hard um, to overcome. And that is one side of the Japanese culture that I... I'm not really a, a, a huge fan of it. Well, listen, every mm. every culture, we have our challenges. We have our <laughs> things that we need to work on to be better human beings. Uh, it, it's again, it's one of the things I love about martial arts is that, mm. uh, you know, here you are living in Japan in a totally different culture. I live in the United States and we're able to talk as friends across an ocean and <laughs> commonality, you know, which immediately creates uh, mm -hmm. a sense of uh, bonding. Do you know what I mean? Right, and, right. Uh, you, know, you, you meet somebody from Africa who studies Shitoru or Shotokan, mm -hmm. you immediately have a common point of reference. And I think it breaks walls down. Mm, I definitely agree. Like, I was just talking to a, um, a Shotokan um, girl from Saudi Arabia the other day. Yeah. <laughs> I've never imagined talking to somebody from Saudi Arabia. Right. <laughs> and, you know, it's just so interesting. And, you know, everybody, I would say, that does karate seriously or that wants to take karate seriously would have that same kind of atmosphere, like the respect. There's, there's respect and there's, yeah. And, and mm -hmm. you know, I think, uh, I think one of the biggest problems in my country, at least, with younger kids is there is a lack of civility, a lack of respect. Uh, and I think that's something that martial arts teaches. And uh, I, I would love to see more kids taking it and uh, especially benefiting from the Japanese philosophy of, of you know, I, when, I, when I think of, of the Japanese culture, I think of respect and humility and uh, 
you know, a, a lot of the very best qualities that a person can have, I think, emanate from uh, the Japanese culture. And oh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, there's, there's a sense of reservation, you know, mm -hmm. uh, holding holding your, your ego in check, I guess is, mm -hmm. is a way to say it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I it took me a long time to learn that um, but but slowly but surely uh, my martial arts training has, has helped me a lot to uh, learn that yeah what was the most memorable scene as you playing Mike Barnes in the movie was it the last stunt scene that you were talking about? yeah I would I would have to say it was the final tournament because you know I had been somebody that bought a ticket to go see the first two movies <laughs> <laughs> right, right and so you know uh, obviously I, I knew what the All Valley Tournament looked like, mm. and then suddenly there I am, filming, and it it looked the same except I was right, the guy, right. you know. <laughs> so, uh, and there were uh, a lot of uh, extras. You know, there were a couple hundred extras mm. in the audience. Oh wow! We had uh, I think eight cameras rolling, and eight it was cameras. the culmination. It was the you know the culmination of the the, the film, and uh, you know it was it was very exciting, um, mm. and. Uh, and I think because the director gave me the freedom to do a lot of ad libbing, that as a as a young actor it was very liberating and freeing mm -hmm. to really just sort of go for it and, right. and you know put my individual stamp on uh, on on the role. That'll be it for part one of Sean's interview. Make sure you check out part two, and make sure you check out my Cobra Kai reaction videos and my Karate Kid videos, and also the interview with Daryl Vidal. If you'd like to restart with your karate or get started with karate for the first time, even in this pandemic, then please check out my online group lesson or private lesson by clicking on this link right here. I'll see you guys in the next video.